You might have noticed a curious monolith in the background of some scenes in Rugby Railway Lockdown. This is actually Rugby Cement Works, a major local employer located in the town's New Bilton district and close to the former Rugby to Leamington railway line. For several decades, it was served by rail. The Rugby to Leamington Railway opened on the 1st of March 1851, serving intermediate stations at Dunchurch, Burdingbury and Martin. Services from Rugby actually continued to Milverton Station between Leamington Spa and Kenilworth stations on the line to Coventry. The line closed to passengers on 15th of June 1959 but continued to be used as a through route by freight and diverted passenger trains until 1965. In 1895, a junction two miles southwest of Martin Station was created in a deep cutting when the London and North Western Railway branch line from Weedon on the West Coast Main Line to Daventry was extended westward to join the Rugby to Leamington Line, providing a through route from Daventry to the Spa Town. Passenger services on the Martin Junction to Weedon Line ceased on the 13th of September 1958. It closed as a through route in December 1963 and most of the track between Southam and Weedon was lifted in 1964. But that's not quite the end of the story. The route served not only the Rugby Cement Works at New Bilton, but also the Salvam Cement Works on the Martin Junction to Weedon Line, just east of Salvam and Long Itchington Station, with freight traffic serving both works continuing until summer 1985, when the route from New Bilton to Salvam, which necessitated the reversal of trains at Martin Junction, officially closed and the traffic transferred to road. It was visited by a Class 31 diesel, number 31247, on the 20th of June that summer, hauling a weed-killing train. However, a final redundant assets tour, as described in a letter to staff, ran from Rugby to Salvam and back on the 17th of July 1985, using a DMU. However, the DMU was a two-car unit rather than the three-car unit, that had been requested. The track from New Bilton to Salvam was lifted in 1987. And thank you to Betty Grucock for these photos taken by her husband John, who was charge man at Rugby Yard. The line from Rugby to the cement works at New Bilton lasted longer, with Redland roof towels using the facility until 1991. Thereafter, the line became neglected for several years, with little or no attempt seemingly made by British Rail to prevent locals from walking their dogs there or using the line as a shortcut. Indeed, in 1993, some of the scenes for my first film, The Amazing World of Archie Closet, were filmed there. One of the notable features of the line was the unusual hand-operated semaphore signal that served the siding that branched off into Rugby Cement Works, crossing Parkfield Road via Rugby's only level crossing. The signal actually rotated through 90 degrees. Over the years, there have been calls to reopen the Rugby to Leamington line as a passenger route, but with the original track bed now partially obstructed by a Leamington housing estate, it would appear very unlikely that this will actually ever happen. In the year 2000, Rugby Cement Works was completely rebuilt. This saw the removal of the siding into the works and also the removal of the level crossing. When I took this photo that summer, the siding had been removed, but the signal was still in situ, although it was subsequently removed. New fences were being erected and security was improved. No more dog walking or filming. Within a few years, the Lawford Road Bridge was flattened to make way for the Rugby Western Relief Road, a bypass essentially, 
which runs parallel to the former Rugby to Leamington line for much of its route. The remaining track was cut back further, stopping just short of the north side of Lawford Road, whereas it had previously continued under the bridge for a short distance. The line effectively was now really just a long siding. The southern works had been demolished by 2012, although the adjacent quarry remained in use. By 2020, rumours had started to circulate that the line was to be brought back into use again, possibly for transporting spoil from the construction of HS2 to fill in an old quarry. A supposedly new photo posted on social media suggested that the preparations were already underway. Then, during the lockdown, I discovered that a number of potential freight trains had been allocated paths to operate between New Bilton and Willesden to run as required, with the client listed as Jarvis. No, not that Jarvis. However, this appeared to back up the rumours and the photo, and I decided this needed investigation. On foot. It's July 2020. This is a pedestrian crossing near Edward Street. The line on one side continues northeast to join the main Rugby to Birmingham line, and on the other continues southwest towards the cement works. There certainly seems to be little evidence so far of the line being brought back into use. The track is very overgrown in places on both sides. Even the gates to the southwestern section are completely overgrown. A visit to the pedestrian bridge near Bridal Road confirms that the track would definitely benefit from another visit by the weed killing train. It was also interesting to see that since 2013, the footpath alongside this section of the line has been closed to the public due to subsidence of the footpath into the adjacent quarry. The investigation isn't over yet though. I need to get a bit closer to the cement works. Aha! A planning application. However, alas, it only refers to the demolition and rebuilding of a laboratory. It does seem that Semex, the owners of Rugby Cement Works, are indeed using the land adjacent to the end of the Rugby to Leamington line, nevertheless. Perhaps a new railhead facility will be built eventually. Another possibility is that Jarvis will only be using the section between the main line and Edward Street, although there will still be a lot of work required to bring it back into use. So, it would seem that the photo I saw online was an old one, possibly taken during the alterations 20 years ago. My investigation has, for now, proved inconclusive. However, if I find out more, then I will be back with an update.